Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to go over my RSI Pro Tips. A few things to keep in mind when looking at the Relative Strength Index is the RSI is not to be traded by itself. We'll use this signal in conjunction with other signals to then develop a trade idea. Also, the RSI results vary depending on what time frame you are viewing. So if you're looking at a 5 minute time frame, the RSI you're seeing will change if you flip to a 10 minute time frame. You can change the length of time frame the RSI dates back. So when we do a quick Google search of RSI length settings, you'll see the default RSI setting for the RSI indicator is 14 periods. That means the indicator is calculated using the last 14 candles or 14 bars on the price chart. Using a shorter time frame, for an example 5 periods, will cause the RSI to reach extreme values above 70 or below 30 more often. Oversold RSI does not mean a reversal. Often scalpers look to this for a bounce in price action. Here's a pro tip. You can add support and resistance lines to the RSI oscillator similar to the way you can to charts. Another pro tip, you can also zoom out on the oscillator to see a clearer picture. Now for myself, I'm using a 7 day RSI length. That's just what I've grown accustomed to and that's my personal preference. I'm also typically looking at a 5 minute chart when deeming if it's oversold or overbought. Now when we take a look at the RSI divergence, this is the bullish divergence on the left and this is the bearish divergence on the right. Now what we can see here is this represents the price action while this represents the RSI indicator. And same for on this side. This represents price action, and this represents the indicator, so the RSI. So what we can see here is that the price was making new lows. Meanwhile, the RSI was making higher lows, signaling a divergence in price. So this is a possible entry to go long. So again, if we combine this with other signals, this is a possible entry. And same could be said for the other way around. So if the price is making new highs while the RSI indicator is making new lows, then this can be a signal that it's going to then reverse and make lower lows on the price action. So again, this is bullish divergence on the left, and this is bearish divergence on the right. To see this on a chart, we can see here on pick that we had new lows down here below and we had higher lows than after. We then had lower lows on the price action. So we had new lows on price action while making higher lows on the RSI, then causing a divergence in price where this is a possible long opportunity. So we can see that in the Discord, we had a recent alert on ticker pick, and the reason for it is because we can see the RSI was alerted down below. We can see that the candle was a big red engulfing candle that hit a low of 552. It then curled back up to 585. Now this isn't a huge move and this isn't a sure reversal, but it makes for a good trade idea and a possible entry to get a scalp out of it. All right guys, let's take a look at the RSI oscillator and how we can find support and resistance by blowing it up and zooming out and what I mean by that so right here I have just a clean chart on PIK this is a five minute time frame and I'm looking just at a candlestick chart and I'm gonna go down here to the RSI that I have set below this is an RSI indicator and anything below this white line is typically oversold so most traders are gonna look at this stock as oversold under 30 RSI but I want to see if I can find a support area below that uh, that this stock likes to historically bounce from. So I'm going to go here and on trading view, you have the ability just to double click on that RSI. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to blow up that RSI and I'm going to zoom out with my mouse as far as I can. So as you can see, it makes a mess of lines, but what's important here that I see is that this typical RSI oversold line of 30. Uh, yes, it is oversold. Uh, yes, it does look like that may be an opportunity for most traders, but for me looking at this historical data uh, with the settings I have set, I can see that it typically likes to bounce below that 30 RSI. So I want to make an area of support 
uh, that I look at for value and I look at for maybe a possible entry, uh, depending on other, uh, other combinations of indicators. So I'm going to go ahead here and mark an area here with my line and I'm going to mark a line and area here. So we can see that I basically just took as many of these lines as I could and try to make an area. Now, some of them went below and that's fine. I want to mark as many as I can that go across, but I also don't want to go too far down. That way I don't miss an opportunity. So this is the area that I have marked as value. So anything under that 22 RSI, 23 RSI is really where I deem this as oversold. So Although, yes, it's sold or oversold at 30 RSI or below. Again, I'm looking at a lower level. So I'm going to go ahead and add an alert just by right clicking on it, add alert, and I'll create an alert there. So whenever it crosses that line now on this RSI oscillator, it's going to then send me an alert. I can then pull up the chart and maybe develop a trade idea if I can combine this with other things such as volume or maybe a support area on the candlestick chart itself. Uh, combined with this so we go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and what we can see is that we had a couple areas here that we hit so i'm going to go ahead and double click on the chart and zoom in a little bit just to see what kind of entries this would have looked like so i'll add a vertical line to wherever the rsi hit that alert level and right there we can see it touched that rsi level that we deem as a support area and it would have sent me an alert. Now this is the alert that I sent to my discord. And as you can see here, what it did is it dipped down on this big red candle and then sent me the alert on my phone. And then I alerted the discord saying, guys, uh, maybe take a look at this one for a scalp opportunity because it is oversold. And in this scenario, we can see how it then made uh, its low here on that candle and then bounce from the 550 level back up to 585 so although it wasn't a reverse it's not signaling an exact reverse it does offer a nice opportunity for a scalp but again i would use this in combination with other indicators as well uh, one thing i want to note here is we touched that level here here and here or came close to it but we didn't actually enter that area of value. And so in which case I really wouldn't be too, uh, feeling too strong about a trade there because I really see in the historical value just by double clicking on the RSI and zooming out that this is the area that I have marked as value. So that's the area I really want to see it come down to if I'm looking for an oversold play. So I'll zoom back in and I'll double click again on another entry. So again, these are those entries that they did below that 30 RSI, but they never entered into my support area. So it wasn't really a trade for me. But over here, we can see that if I double click on the chart here, we did enter right there and I'll add a vertical line again. So again, I would have gotten an alert right there, entering that first line, entering into the area of support that I have marked from the historical data. And what you can see here is it did bounce up there. See. It wasn't a reverse. It didn't hold up. But what you can see is maybe you did a five minute break of highs. sell at the top here and you're looking at a 26 cent per share trade, which isn't huge, but it is a nice, a nice little scalp using the lows of the previous candle. So five minute break of highs with the lows of the previous uh, low and um, you know where you sell is up to you. But what it's showing you is that, yes, Historically, this is where it's oversold. This is an area of possible value, and there was a scalp because of it. Again, over here, it touched down below the white line, which is the 30 RSI, but it never did touch below uh, where we have our area of value. So here it did, and it did offer a scalp. Now it doesn't always work like this. It doesn't. It's not a 100%, uh, you know, fail-proof plan, but it is a good way to uh, be able to see that. The 30 RSI isn't the only uh, level you want to be watching. You can zoom out on this and really see an area of value that you can see based on the historical data. Now you can do the same thing at the top. You can say that maybe the 70 isn't really where you see it oversold. Maybe you see that there's a little bit, or I mean overbought, excuse me. Uh, maybe you see that it has a little bit more room to get up there. So maybe you can just mark an area up here. And you can say, well, in this area, that's where I'm going to start scaling out of my position and the lottery maybe can ride from there. So 
This is just one way of finding support and resistance using that RSI oscillator that I use in my trading. I don't think a lot of traders uh, know about this. So it's just a cool little uh, tip for you going forward. So quick recap, combine the RSI with other signals. Try setting different RSI lengths and try setting different time frames to see different results. Mark RSI support and resistance levels to help you develop an idea of where it really is oversold and make sure to smash that like button if you found any value in this video.